tarantulas, getting thrown from a plane, rectal exams, marriage. Some of the greatest punishments on impractical jokers might not be what you expect. Joe's punishment in the season three episode, Female, has Joe dressing up as a woman to perform in a fashion show, except not really. Work it, buddy, work yeah, it, buddy. That's it. Joe actually has to talk at a seminar for tech enthusiasts looking at new app ideas, and the app ideas are pretty offensive. After his immediate shock, Joe is surprisingly comfortable with his transformation, and even more at home pitching app ideas that he's never seen before. Joe solidifies his impractical Joker status here as the one who can do anything confidently. The punishment lived on is one of the best and strangest, and Joe's later commitment to equality shows that he gets it. And what better way to stick it to the other guys? It's rare that a punishment has more than one loser, but the season five episode, Training Day, puts Joe, Sal, and Murr all on the chopping block. Q was previously embarrassed in front of his former New York City Fire Department colleagues by being forced to perform in a musical about his personal failures in the episode Stage Fright. Keep making farts on TV. After this, and another punishment that ruined his Jeep in Car Sick, Q was clearly sitting on something big while biding his time. As a result, he puts his friends through a rigorous training process with the Fire Academy. All three of them struggle, and Joe is forced to swing an axe through a portrait of his young daughter. It's Red Dying! Yeah, Red Dying! I'm sorry! Oh, I'm so sorry! Though the triple punishments are few and far between, the Fire Academy outing has been voted among the best of the best. Not only has Sal's haunted corn maze been listed as one of his best punishments, but it's also one that some viewers have said they'd have wanted to tackle themselves. The season three episode, Field of Screams, shows Sal having to make his way through a corn maze while holding a guided rope with plenty of creepy obstacles waiting in line to scare the life out of him. Little girl, I will not hesitate to punch you. It's one of the most fun punishments featured on Impractical Jokers, while also setting Sal up for his later punishment of moving through a haunted house and fighting off a horde of sewer zombies. How did he get here? By not kissing a blonde woman on the lips, Sal becomes the instant loser of the Devil Voices Challenge. Though it's Murr who fails to get the audience to applaud him while quitting at the zoo and quit fantastically, Sal eventually loses again during his presentation about dinosaurs in Dino Might. Murr takes on a fifth grader in his season seven punishment during the episode Dropping Knowledge. Of course, the consequences are much more dire for losing in this version of the famous game show. It's another segment where first-time viewers aren't sure if the situation is being set up or not. Though the camera panning to items being taken from Murr's apartment every time he fails to answer a question correctly speaks for itself. It's a different kind of punishment for Murr, who's usually physically humiliated or thrown from heights. When all that's been done, the only thing left is to insult his intelligence. You're an English major and an author. How do you not know this? Fifth grader Jake is a terrific sport, even if he has no idea what to do with the shower head, bedding, door handle, and diploma that he wins. Murr's journey to failure was cemented when he took two thumbs down in the earlier command challenge, Biker Boys, when he refused to make fun of someone's accent. If there's one thing about the impractical jokers, it's that their families are always willing to be involved in their challenges and punishments. In the season six episode, The Walking Dread, Sal's nieces sacrifice themselves to a horde of zombies in order to have Sal save them as his punishment. Fans of the show know that Sal's reputation for being scared of everything is almost more well-known than he is. All he has to do is get a key. The key right there that's hanging right there? Well, it looks like you guys are staying in there. Sal's dance with his apocalyptic destiny in the sewers is up there with the show's most memorable punishments, pairing his fear of gross things with his fear of everything else. It's a finale suited uniquely to Sal. Sal's nieces are incredible sports, especially considering how easily he crumbles while they seem bored by the whole situation. According to a Reddit Q&A with Sal, cast members have refused things in the past, but wrestling with a heap of raw meat in a weird warehouse is just on the right side of his boundaries. In one of the most recent punishments on this list, it's safe to say not much has changed for Sal since his corn maze and haunted house days. In season 10, episode eight, former White House associate director Cal Penn guest stars and takes part in the final challenge. Sal is forced to tell a stranger that his breath smells in front of Penn multiple times. The situation escalates when the stranger threatens Sal, encouraging him to move away, but Sal is forced to continue. Penn and the gang deliver something that's painfully awkward, and ultimately, the potentially embarrassed stranger's imaginary foul breath is redeemed when Penn tells Sal that it's been his own breath all along. Oh my it. god. What's that? <laughs> I just. Your I breath, bro. No, no, no. What? Your breath li literally smells like. 
With Joe Gatto having left Impractical Jokers, the move to include a different celebrity guest star in each episode seems to be working, and this punishment provides plenty of laughs. Poor Murr. By season four of Impractical Jokers, he wasn't a stranger to extreme punishments. The season's second episode, Below the Belt, sees him giving a presentation about climate change. The catch is that he has no control over what the others do to his lower half while he's behind a table, which includes leg waxing, pants wetting, and mouse traps. It's so weird! Fans may remember that earlier in the episode, Murr loses both of the featured challenges. Sword Losers sees the gang having to do whatever they're told during a fencing class while still being able to recruit their student to sign up for another class. You look like an adult born baby. Fun guard ass. <laughs> Not all punishments can make you fear for the life of the participant, but Sal's beastly surprise during the season 7 finale does exactly that. Though the episode is technically a one-hour holiday special, it doesn't pull any punches when Sal is stuck inside a cage with a bucket of chicken, and brown bears are sent in to keep him company. Oh my god! Oh my god! With three challenges determining the loser across the holiday special, it very well could have been one of the others in the bear cage, since it's not really something anyone would be comfortable with. Sal's earlier loss in both the Meal or No Meal and Toy Vey challenges threw him into the loser's club and a bear cage. Season 3 offered plenty of chances for Sal to scream and get the fright of his life. One memorable instance happens during the episode Junk in the Trunk, where his punishment involves getting into the trunk of a random woman's rental car fans find out that the woman's actually in on the plan, though Sal is unaware of this. I just went flying. Viewers also enjoyed seeing him being hit by a loaf of bread. On the road to failure, Sal got no votes during the topical storm challenge, while presenting with slides that had little or nothing to do with the subject. Sal also loses out in Stick and Spin, which has the goal of getting a specific body part to touch a stranger's specific body part. When it comes to what fans might consider the most brutal punishments, anything involving kids is likely to be high on the list. In the Season 7 episode, The Running of the Bullies, it's once again Sal who faces another grueling punishment, tasked with posing as a lifeguard at a local swimming pool. He has to kick everyone out on the grounds of bullying, with the task unable to end until the pool is empty. Though some viewers found the punishment too painful to watch, others relished Sal's ability to not just argue with a bunch of kids, but their parents too. If I hear any lip, it's 10. What makes the punishment even worse is how well-behaved the kids are actually being. Arguably, it's all Sal's fault, losing out on both of the episode's challenges. After being unable to get someone to order an especially weird lunch in Meal or No Meal, Sal also falls flat in the team-based command task, Dust Buddies. It always comes back to presentations as challenges and punishments, and once in a while, home invasion. In the Season 2 episode, Sweat the Small Things, Sal's punishing presentation is actually a cover. While he delivers a talk that's designed to be about stress relief, the slides show the other cast members breaking into his house while Sal was on vacation, abusing everything in sight. I have to move <laughs> because there's no doubt I have probably hepatitis A through Z. It got fans thinking about what home invasion punishments might look like for the other cast members. By season 5, Joe's home was invaded and completely wrapped in wrapping paper. Though Sal lost out earlier while facing the dartboard of destiny when he failed to kiss a guy's hand, it was Joe who became the loser in an earlier challenge while trying to teach an art class. Joe's habit of being unfazed by anything would have made this punishment a lot more boring, as he certainly wouldn't have cared if people had taken their shoes off like Sal does. From the very first episode onward, the Impractical Jokers gang has a long-standing love affair with White Castle. The restaurant is featured again in the punishment for the Season 8 episode, Fast Feud, with Sal having to work the drive through orders, only it's not his voice that's coming through the microphone. Fortunately for Sal, the punishment had an ending that surprised everyone. Sal, you gotta slow down, buddy. Is that, is that it? I, I'm just oh saying. Oh my god, was... Sal, it's you! Some fans have gone as far as scouting out the White Castles the team has filmed at, with Joe on hand to help via Twitter. Lynbrook and Massapequa, by the way. Once again, Sal is the only loser in this episode. The opening challenge, House Sitters, requires the Jokers to try to find someone to house sit for them despite absurd circumstances and conditions, but Sal becomes the only loser in the follow-up battle, Shadow Shoppers. When the Jokers can't get physical, they have to get psychological. It's these unexpected inconveniences that are the best method to torture Sal. During the Season 8 episode, Well, the Jokers torture Sal without him realizing it by leaning into everything he's been afraid of on the show so far. The punishment isn't even something that dawns on Sal until after the punishment is over. 
first, he's surprised by the fact that a punishment is even happening, and it becomes worse when he's told he'll have to bungee jump. Then he has to deal with cats. Or does he? How about a pile of manure? It's not clear that this is all misdirection until it's all over. We're screwing with you, buddy. <laughs> Guys, I can't take it anymore. Q's punishment in the Season 5 episode, Brother of the Sisterhood, sees him posing as someone who would politely but firmly disagree as a panelist at a women's rights event. The punishment is so cringeworthy that it actually made its way to a mainstream Reddit forum, with many Impractical Jokers fans stepping in to explain that Q had been set up. Women love Q. He's a charming guy, he's nice, he was brought up right by his mother. Yes, he's a charm his way out of this though. While it's definitely a punishment that's considered to be a fan favorite, it almost wasn't Q that had to face it. Sal lost the first challenge, handing it off by refusing to make a sarcastic comment about equal pay while filling out fake questionnaires. However, it was Q who was unable to retrieve a $5 bill from a stranger during cash holes. Unluckily for Q, the last challenge was a double down, meaning he scored two thumbs down instead of the usual one. The best punishments come as a form of revenge, and Joe is a fantastic example of that. In the Season 7 episode, Turning the Tables, Joe's punishment sees him finding and breaking eight fake tables in a real-life restaurant. The challenge is to figure out which are fake and which are real, by smashing them. This is happening. The punishment was actually Murr's revenge for an earlier punishment, where he had to take down a female judo Olympic medalist during a party. He failed and ended up being thrown in a pool. Joe walks off his definite back injuries with style. In the episode's Impractical Insider feature, it's revealed that the tables Joe broke through were actually made of foam, and that the people sitting at the designated decoy tables were in on the joke. Everyone else was a real customer. In the Season 4 episode, Elevating the Game, it's Sal's turn to experience his own personal hell, again. Known for his fear of enclosed spaces, his punishment sees him stuck in an elevator with all manner of things happening around him, including a coughing man who taps into Sal's germophobia, and a cat. Again, Sal isn't aware that he's being punished until after the whole thing is over and he spots a hidden camera. Though the strangers are in on the joke, it eventually leads to Sal asking mechanics and firefighters to help free them. It's a pretty unlucky ending for Sal, who wasn't the only cast member to lose in the episode's three challenges. I feel like I'm going crazy. <laughs> On the way to his punishment, Sal lost lexicon artists when he was unable to get someone to agree that a made-up word is real, and failing to get a lady's number in the Getting Unlucky Challenge. One of Q's most memorable punishments is seen in Season 3's Just Say No, where, as the title suggests, Q's punishment is to go to a baseball stadium and simply say no to everyone he interacts with. What he doesn't know is that a beautiful woman is waiting to publicly ask him to marry her. Please marry me. No. No. Though she's in on the joke, she sets up a backstory of them being together for seven years, making the inevitable outcome of onlookers gasping and booing even more painful to watch. Some who claimed to have been at the game itself revealed that no one in the crowd there knew what was coming, or even that Q was actually a TV star, since the show was still relatively young. Even though fans might feel it's impossible to decide which are the best punishments, Q often takes a top spot. Murr doesn't have a whole lot of hair to begin with, but that doesn't mean that he's not devastated to part with what he has. By the Season 5 episode Browbeaten, the gang decides that now is the perfect time to shave off all of Murr's hair, including his eyebrows. If that weren't punishment enough, there's also a follow-up for Murr to endure, with the guys taking him to be photographed for a new driver's license. Since it doesn't expire until March 2026, Murr may still be out there walking around with a totally bald ID. You look like a demon! It's also a punishment that sets Murr up for further humiliation to come. A Season 6 punishment results in Murr wearing a wig made out of Q's hair for the remainder of the season. Sometimes a punishment is so bad that even the Impractical Jokers team acknowledges it as one of the worst. The Season 5 episode, Spider-Man, puts Q's arachnophobia to the test, strapping him to a board while the others torment him with a remote-controlled spider, which is then swapped out for real-life tarantulas once he's settled in. It might seem like a particularly cruel punishment, but it must be something Q was relatively up for. Of course, he was also given a safe word, which they ignored. Pumpernickel! Pumpernickel, stop! You're a grown man! Screaming Pumpernickel in a warehouse! Not only does the punishment set the other Jokers up to later have Q take his revenge on them, but the episode itself puts Q through the ringer too. Unable to eat sushi during fishy business, Q loses out and gets pretty irate with his friends. Q also fails to get the most hands raised while teaching a hardware workshop in Brooklyn in the episode's second standoff, Power Tools. The season six episode, Rubbed the Wrong Way, 
proves that the best punishments for Joe are ones where he has no control, seeing that he has absolutely no shame. In the episode's punishment, Joe has to portray a genie in a play, with the other guys controlling his harness and smashing him into props and set pieces. Genie does as you wish. It's a sequence of actual injuries, a near malfunction that almost takes off his pants, and smashing through a window. Congratulations. <laughs> Tricked into thinking the gang was teaching others how to jump out of planes, the reveal that skydiving is in fact Murr's punishment is almost as satisfying as watching the distress on his face during the flight. The season 3 premiere episode Look Out Below has Murr losing two out of three challenges, earlier refusing to take a little boy's hat and throw it. Later, Invention Intervention shows teams pitching their fake inventions, with Murr bringing in the lowest show of hands. The result was one of the most iconic punishments on the show. It's no secret that Murr is absolutely terrified of heights. In a 2016 interview with Sling Television, he described how pushing each other to the limit is exactly what solidifies their friendship. A few seasons ago, they threw me out of an airplane, and it was hysterical because I cried like a very young school child. It was so funny and terrifying. We're always pushing boundaries, but we know, generally, we're not going to kill anybody or rob a bank. Other than that, I think anything's game. Sal's back in the loser seat in the season 3 episode, Toasted, being forced to deliver a terrible wedding speech on a random couple's big day. You know it's pretty terrible because it's been written by the other Jokers, but the couple were in on the joke. You beautiful inside and out, I should know. <laughs> Viewers found the whole ordeal painfully awkward, and it's also been voted as one of the most cringeworthy punishments of all time on the show. According to the show's Instagram page, a handful of wedding guests recognized Sal when he went up to give his speech, but the shocked reaction of most of the audience didn't do anything to ease his pain. I run a project where I bring pictures of all different girls in bikinis to prisoners in exchange for woodworkings. Murr's time in the piercing chair is enough to deem it as one of the best punishments of all time. Thanks to the so-called Wheel of Piercings, which determines exactly where the victim will be getting new jewelry when he fails to answer personal trivia questions, Murr's final tally ends up being two nipple piercings and a belly button piercing. Though some fans think that Murr can actually pull the body jewelry off, many agree that this is in line with some of the show's best old-school punishments. The pain wasn't just physical. Much like Murr's earlier lie detector punishment, he was forced to reveal a number of embarrassing details about himself in the process. Murr later brushed off the apparent pain in a tweet saying, I was born with abnormally hard nipples. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm feeling which one is more sensitive. Oh, God, no, oh, God, he's, he's so weird like that. Considering Murr's skydiving punishment is easily considered one of his personal worst, it's no surprise that he would want revenge for it. He gets the opportunity in the season 3 finale, Brother in Loss, by blindfolding and strapping Sal down to wheel him to a mystery location. That's my sister, I swear to God. A church where he watches Murr marry his sister, Jenna. It might be as much of a surprise to learn that Murr was in fact legally married to Sal's sister, though it was annulled after one day. Though the disapproval is clear throughout the punishment, Sal is physically unable to object after having his mouth duct taped shut. It takes him a whole season to get his revenge, with the season 4 finale seeing Murr reveal a chest shaved to form a coconut bra in a public park where a flash mob destroys a replica of his childhood blanket. In the season 3 episode, In Poor Taste Buds, the team ups the ante on a tried and tested public speaking punishment by introducing another element. Murr must pretend to be a culinary expert while presenting foods from around the world but he can't taste, speak clearly, or really control his mouth at all after being injected with Novocaine. It's the perfect way to thwart the usually smooth-talking Murr. Braised, braised beef is This is one that leaves Murr particularly red-faced. He'd already been humiliated by being made to ask clients to participate in strip tennis in the Tennis Chumps Challenge while posing as an instructor on the court, making that the only failed challenge of the entire episode. If you ever needed proof that Murr is dealt a pretty harsh hand in terms of punishments, the fact that he ends up having two prostate exams on Impractical Jokers says it all. The most famous of the two occurs in the Season 5 episode, Dark Side of the Moon, in which Murr has to volunteer for a free exam by one doctor, though it ultimately leads to another one for a second opinion. Though some fans might say that this punishment goes too far, it's also a great example of awareness, with Murr taking it all in stride as something that needs to be done. You have a finger there you in go. your ass! All right. On television! In a 2016 interview with the Green Bay Press Gazette, 
Murr explained that there was an added benefit to going through the ordeal, saying, A month ago, in front of a room full of 50 guys, they had two doctors give me two different prostate exams. But you'll be glad to know my prostate looks good. Are the permanent punishments in Impractical Jokers the scariest? According to Q, the answer is a definite yes. In the Season 3 episode, The Permanent Punishment, Q, Murr, and Sal all have a three-way punishment after losing a challenge attaching balloons to customers without getting caught. Joe gets to choose an embarrassing tattoo for each, and he makes some incredible choices, playing into each of their insecurities already explored throughout the series. 38 lives alone has three cats! <laughs> Except for Sal, who has absolutely no association with his tattoo. Oh my god, is that Jaden Smith? <laughs> While answering fan questions in a behind-the-scenes interview, Q confirmed that his tattoo was the scariest punishment he ever took part in. It's something he's been able to take in stride as the years have passed, tweeting in 2022, 46. Lives alone. Has three cats. Sal's tattoo would come up a few more times in challenges, including the punishment in Season 4's Blind Justice, in which he had to show off his prison tattoo to a bunch of senior citizens. Sal would even show off his Jaden Smith tattoo to Jaden Smith himself years later, and get a second one. Fans of the show look back at it as one of the funniest punishments of all time, even considering how betrayed the friends seem. At the end of the day, it's best summed up by Joe's initial reasoning for picking something permanent. What the It's funny. <laughs>